Hello and welcome back to another session. In today's video, we'll discuss about Amazon EC2 or scaling groups. These come handy when you are not sure about the load of your application, meaning you cannot tell the exact number of instances that you will need running to meet the usage. In this situation, or scaling lets you create a group of instances by specifying the minimum number of instances that you need always running and a desired capacity and a maximum capacity. Then order scaling either increases or decreases, otherwise known as scales out or scales in the number of instances based on the load. This is very helpful in managing the right capacity always and also saves the cost. In addition to groups, there are two key components. Uh, one is launch templates, which has a set of configurations like AMI, instance type, etc. to create the instances. And second is the scaling options, which lets you specify on what basis you want to increase or decrease the number of instances. We'll see them in detail uh, when we create a group in console in just a minute. Also, all these features come with no additional costs. So you have to just pay for the underlying EC2 resources, but the auto scaling itself is free. So we will try to build the setup today, a VPC with two subnets in different availability zones and an auto scaling group covering both the zones with two instances in it. Let's get started. Okay, so we are in the AWS console in the EC2 section. You can find auto scaling right at the bottom. Before getting into that, we are going to first create our launch template, which is one of the prerequisites for creating the order scaling groups. So to create a launch template, first you have to specify the launch template name, which can be any alphanumeric value, and then the version for it. So the version is required because you can update the launch templates even after creating them. And every time you update the launch template, it will create a new version. And after creating a new version, you can go ahead and update the auto scaling group as well to use the new version. And the only required attribute within a launch template is the AMI, uh, that is an Amazon um, machine image. So I'm selecting the free tier option here. You can select any of the marketplace images as well as your own custom images. And then the instance type, it can be either selected here or when you are uh, provisioning the auto scaling group. Then you have options to specify key pair as well as network settings uh, where you can select the VPCs as well as storage uh, where you can add any additional volumes. And then under advanced details, you have options to select IAM role, uh, which, will, which can be associated to your instance, or even you can add additional EC2 settings like you can add uh, termination protection or you can uh, specify the tenancy options or any metadata options. But today we are going to just specify the user data. So this will help us identify uh, which VM we are trying to access. So I'm just grabbing the instance ID and trying to paste it on the screen uh, and by installing Apache to it. Okay, uh, so now we have created the launch template. Once after creating the launch template, you will see the launch template ID, which is a unique ID, along with the default version and the latest version. Right now it's the same because we haven't updated our launch template. And now before creating the auto scaling group, we will provision the base infrastructure, which is required. So I'm going to create a new VPC, not using the default VPC. It's always recommended to use a, a custom a VPC. So I'm naming the VPC and specifying a CIDR uh, block. Then let's go ahead and create the VPC. And under this VPC, we are going to create four subnets. Uh, there is two public subnets and two private subnets. We are actually going to place the instances within the auto scaling group in the private subnets. And our application will be actually running in the private subnets, which is a secure way of doing it. And the two public subnets is required for uh, providing the internet access as well as in the next section, we are going to create a load balancer and place them in the public subnet in order to access our order scaling groups. Uh, so we are not going to do that in this uh, session, but there will be a follow up to create the load balancer, which will be placed in our uh, pub public subnets. Uh, so we have just uh, done with the two public subnets. Now we are creating the private subnets here. 
and each time try to specify a different CIDR block. Uh, overlapping CIDR blocks are not allowed. So specify a subnet name as well as a CIDR block. And notice that I'm choosing an availability zone explicitly. This is because if you don't choose an availability zone, then um, AWS tends to put them in a random availability zone. All right. So we have all our four subnets created now. Next, we are going to take care of the internet access by creating an internet gateway as well as a NAT gateway. So uh, even though NAT gateway is used for providing internet access to the private subnets, the NAT gateway itself should be placed in the public subnets and should be associated with an elastic IP. All right, so we have created both our internet gateway and NAT gateway. Now let's go back to the internet gateway and attach it to the VPC. We forgot to do that. So uh, select the internet gateway and attach it to the VPC uh, that we just provisioned. And finally, we are going to update the route tables. So there will be a default route table which will get created during your uh, VPC creation. So you, you can edit the routes and then add a route out to internet or to, to the internet gateway. And in addition to, the, to this, we, ha we have to also update the subnet associations. Uh, so to this particular route table, we are going to attach both the public subnets so that they directly have access to the internet gateway. And then we are going to create another route table. And let's just call this as private route and attach it to our VPC. Uh, but this time, we are going to direct the internet traffic to the NAT gateway. So or 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 to the NAT gateway. And attach our private subnets to this. So edit subnet associations and attach both our private subnets. All right. So we have our basic networks uh, set up now. So the only thing pending is to create the order scaling group itself. So let's go back to EC2. And under that, you will see uh, order scaling groups. Um, the first thing required is to specify the group name. So it can be any alphanumeric name. And it must be unique within the region of your account. And then you can select the launch template here. And you can see the version being selected. Uh, so if you have made any changes, then you can select a different version as well. And you will you can verify the option that we have specified for that version. And here you have an option to select the network settings. So we are going to choose the network uh, VPC that we just created along with the two private subnets. Make sure that you are, create, you are selecting the private subnets and not the public ones. All right. And then uh, you have an option to change the instance type requirements. You can override the ones you have specified in the launch template, but we are okay with it. So we are just going to go with T1 micro. And for this session, I'm going to leave out the load balancer and just use the EC2 health checks. So it will check your EC2 instance. If it is healthy, then it will not replace them. If it's unhealthy, uh, it will check for every 300 seconds and then it will replace it. Right, you have additional monitoring options available as well. And then here comes the group size. So you have to specify the desired capacity, minimum and the maximum. So it's the order scaling group's responsibility to always have the minimum number of instances running. And this is the target tracking policy. So you can uh, set up the scaling policy against which you want to either scale up or scale down your instance capacity. You have options like CPU utilization, network capacity, or uh, the load balancer request. For now, for the demo purposes, we are not going to select any of it. Uh, we are going to let order scaling group select them based on uh, their healthy status. Then you also have an option to send out notifications or add uh, tags. These are optional. Uh, if you want, you can set them up. And finally, verify all the options. If they all look good, uh, 
you can go ahead and create them and you also have an option to edit them from here and let's go ahead and create the auto scaling group so once you select create auto scaling group that auto scaling group will automatically go ahead and start provisioning the instances behind the scenes uh, so we'll see that in just a minute right uh, so if you click on the auto scaling group the first page will display all the details that we selected for our auto scaling group um, like every resource in uh, AWS, it, this will also have an ARN and then all these details are editable so you can edit them from this uh, section and then under activity it will display uh, the activity history so you can see here that it's trying to launch two EC2 instances and both are in launching status for now. And in the next section is the automatic scaling. So you can change the scaling options here at any point. Uh, you can add any dynamic scaling policy that we just saw, or you can even uh, set up schedule actions uh, to increase or decrease the number of instances at a particular time of a week or a particular day, or even at a minute level. Uh, so this is useful if you, if you know that your load is going to increase at a particular point in time. Right, and the instance management will actually sh uh, show the instances that are provisioned. So you can see that it was uh, really quick. Uh, we have two instances in service uh, right away. So these instances, you can even see them from the EC2 page. I'll show that in just a minute. And you have options, advanced options for monitoring your uh, EC2 instances as well. Okay, so th these are the instances in the EC2 section. And as you can see, the instances are in running state and the status checks are being initialized. You can try stopping one of the instances. So this should automatically notify the order scaling group that were, something is wrong with one of the instances uh, because it will stop receiving the signal that the instance is healthy. Uh, this will be detected by using the health check which we had set up, EC2 health check. If you remember, we had set up one for every 300 seconds. Uh, so the stopping the instance will notify the order scaling group. And as you can see, it has terminated the stopped instance and started provisioning a new instance. So by this way, uh, order scaling can always guarantee that the minimum number of two instances will always be running. And as you can see, the instance has been provisioned in a different availability zone uh, just to maintain the availability in various uh, zones. So this is about auto scaling groups. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.